Good morning, everyone. Dignities on the dais, my dear colleagues and friends. Uh, I'm here on behalf of Central Research Institute, Kasoli. We are manufacturer of vaccines and antisera. I've been asked to talk about the quality management system in vaccine production. Of course, uh, this is a work which we day in and day out, and quality management system is integral part of any manufacturer who's making vaccines as such. So we do comply with all the regulations. So with this, I start with my presentation. So why do we say we need a quality management system? We need a quality management system because first and all, it's a regulated requirement. Like whenever there's a regulated requirement, you have to comply with it. So that is why that's the first and foremost thing, but that is not the only thing why we have a QMS. Second and the most important part is it builds and assures the quality, safety, and efficacy in the product what we are making. That itself gives us a assurance or the end user when they're using it, they are assured of the quality and that's why they use it. So that is important for us to, to get their faith in us or to get that belief that what we are giving them as a product is the worth using it. So that's another requirement why we are going for it. As far as the regulatory requirements are concerned, we have the different frameworks. These are the national frameworks and the international frameworks. In the national frameworks, we have the Drugs and Cosmetic Act, which um, kind of forces us to follow these procedures. So it's like a policing there, which asks us to follow this, and we follow this by the Schedule M quality system, which actually talks about the GMP. Second uh, is the Indian Pharmacopoeia. My colleague had just emphasized on this Indian pharmacopoeia as such, so I'm not going in detail here. The international regulations, if you are going to export, you have to follow those international regulations, like WHO regulation, it could be the European regulations, USFD, or any which one way or which particular country you aim to supply it. Since I talk, I'm talking about the QMS and vaccine, so I just would like to talk about certain definitions here. So what we mean by QMS as a definition, it's a management system, which is a wide-ranging concept covering all matters that individually or collectively influences the quality of a product. Or we can also say that it is a totality of the arrangements made with the objectives of ensuring that products are of quality required for their intended use. So it's a model for pharmaceutical quality system that can be implemented throughout the different stages of a product life cycle. So in all these things, we're just saying the same thing, that whatever you're manufacturing, you have to be assured of the quality, and that quality is a constant process which will be checked at each step you're taking into that in the while you're manufacturing it. So as we talked about the QMS, I'm also talking about the vaccine and the, what we understand by vaccine. So as per definition, it's a biological preparation that consists of either a whole organism or a part of it against which immunization is to be achieved. All of us know there are four types of vaccine. I'm not going in detail of it, but Broadly, we have live vaccines, we have killed vaccines or inactivated vaccines, we have toxoid vaccine, which we are making the diphtheria, diphtheria pertussis, and tetanus, DNT are the toxoid part, and the subunit vaccine. So the process of the vaccine manufacturing involves the upstream process and the downstream process. Those who are familiar with the terms, they would know it. Those who are not, they can see the first two steps are made up of the, that is known as the upstream and the below three steps are the downstream. Like that is first and foremost, you select the strain out of which you want to make the vaccine. And then of course you have to grow that microorganism. And later on that, that is a downstreaming process. You have to isolate and purify the microorganism. You have to inactivate that organism and then you formulate the vaccine. And then there's a quality control and the lot release. These are the journal then steps. And if we go in details in that, as you said in each step, the quality checks are maintained. So right from the selection of the raw material selection to the final product when it goes to the end user, in between is the process of the manufacturing. So it starts when you're selecting your raw material. And once you've selected your raw material, you're assured about the quality, you go for the production part in which the detailed parts I shall elaborate again. But once the final product is also made, then also your responsibility is not finished. Your quality checks are still there. That is still the time it uses a user uses is that is the transportation part that you assure that it is 
transported at a cold chain or whatever temperature required for that particular vaccine. So this is all the three stages and broadly before manufacturing, during manufacturing and post manufacturing part of it. So this is the three parts that you saw, the raw material part that is pre-manufacturing stage. In process QC is when you are manufacturing the vaccine and the final product QC that is when you are sending it to the end user. So these are the various sub parts of it. When they're selecting the raw material, you have to select the air quality, water quality, the chemical models or the production material. You also see in the process when you're doing the staining test, inactivation test, physical test, biological activity test. And when your final product is made, you check the quality of that product which you have made by physical test, identification test, stability studies, and the VVM monitoring. VVM is basically to see the stability part when you're transporting it, that is post-production, that it remains whatever product you have made, the end user using the same product. It has not changed. Next, please. So this is a diagram which just says that how QMS is inbuilt in your whole process, right from the selection that is R&D portion, right? When you're doing the R&D till you inactivate the product, in each stage, the QMS is inbuilt. That is in the helm of the affair. You see in the center is a QMS. So whenever you're manufacturing or selecting or doing R&D or producing the product or even discontinuing it, your QMS is at the heart of it. It is maintained. And each step, you're doing the process control, you're doing the change controls, and you're doing the CAPA, you are. This is for each step. The each different step, like when you're doing your R&D, when making the product, you're doing the technology transfer, or you're commercially manufacturing, or when you're inactivating the products. So these three steps would always be there. That is why the QMS is not a standalone procedure. It is a part and parcel, right from the beginning of the idea of the conception of the idea till the time it uses, the user uses it. Next, please. This is again, I have uh, given the detail of it, the strengthening of QMS and vaccine production. These are the various steps of the vaccine production and how each step has to follow the QMS qualification. Whenever they're manufacturing, not even a single step would go where the quality checks are not maintained. The first three diagrams, as you can see, that is your seed, and then from uh, you grow it, after growing, you harvest it, you purify it, you make a bulk, then you, in the bulk, you add your additives, your adjuvant stability factors, uh, and after addition, here also QMS has been checked, and then, of course, it goes the filling part of it. After filling, you have to do the examination, that is a naked examination, or there are tools available if you want to use that, and then, of course, the labeling part of it, label, of course, you know, you have seen the vaccines, you know the label contains all the details about the manufacturer, it tells what is the product, what is the route of administration, what is the expiry, all those things are checked. And then, of course, the packaging, and then it finally reaches the person who intended to use it, or to the clinician, or directly to the patient, as far as the conditions are. Next, please. So this is, again, the same diagram which tells you how, like, if it's a, in our facility, we have selected the raw material. The material comes to the warehouse. The warehouse has been picked up for the quality checks. The quality checks are maintained, and once they are sure about the quality, then only it goes for the production part of it. And once the production is done, the various stages of transportation, where again the cold chain is maintained, and then it goes and reaches to the end user. Next, please. The, how do, the topic actually say, how do you strengthen it? Of course, the quality checks are there, the books are there, everything's there, you have your SOPs, but when you say the QMS, you have to see that your SOPs are being followed. You have the SOPs available for each step, but those steps have to be followed. Like if there's a parent, parent seed when you're selecting, you're thinking about a new vaccine, there are many of my friends here who would like to make a vaccine, they're going in a field of vaccine manufacturing, or at least they intend to do that. So for that, they have to have a parent seed first. When they have a parent seed, they have to check the origin, history, its source, certificate of authentication, absence of advantageous agent. As the name says, advantageous agent, I don't know why they say that, because I feel it is actually checking that there's no contaminant in that. So that's, how does it advantage? I don't get it, but that says so. So it's a, you check for the absence of the contaminants, the quantity and the characterization. In the characterization, you see all aspects is physical, biochemical, serological, molecular, physiobiochemical. And once these tests are done, these are not one-time tests. After parent seed, then you have a master seed, and then, of course, you have a working seed. You make master seed and working seed in your own facility wherever you want to make the vaccine. 
and again the same steps are repeated. Regarding the origin, history, these are one time step, but when you do the characterization that you do each time you are taking a working seed out of it. So these are the steps which you are doing one time and these are the steps which you are doing every time a working seed is made for the vaccine purpose. Next please. So these are the various steps. Uh, I'm not too sure if you'd like to go in the details of each step, but it again says if you want to just break down each step and then talk about the details of it, that how QMS has been maintained. Of course, right from the seed strain that you do the integrity of the container, the purity part of it, the labeling of the thing. You would like to check the sterility of the media if you're inoculating the seed in that media. You would like to check at the stage of harvesting by identity, yield, and absence of contamination. During purification process, again, you will check for the yield and the absence of contamination. Next, please. Then the detoxification and uh, inactivation part. Our QMS team would identify the specific toxicity, any irreversibility, absence of contaminants in the pH. Stabilization and preservatives are added, and once they're added, they're also not without the check of QMS. There's a qualification. And the stabilization, you do the quantification of stabilizers, you do the quantification of preservatives also. Next, please. Yes, sir. 30 minutes. <laughs> Last few slides, sir. Then, of course, these are the characterization of vials. When you, the vials which you're using for your vaccine, you have to do the sterility, pH, potency, volume, and identity test, along with the preservative, stabilization, and the endotoxin content test. Next, please. Next, please. This is, of course, the same thing we've talked about. The QC is during storage, transfer, and use, your, and your role does not finish once you've manufactured it. Your role is still there till the time it reaches the end user, so you have to maintain that cold chain, and you have to do the stability studies. This is a stability study during product development, during licensing, and also after licensing. That is an ongoing stability study. So as I said, it is an ongoing process. It does not stop at any step we to take. Next, please. These are, of course, the particular example given for our own institute. The steps are same as we already enumerated for vaccine production. And of course, the various checks which we incorporate the QA control right from the when the seed is received, that control is with the division which handles the quality part. Under their control, the seed is released. Even the detoxification or purification that also needs the quality checks. Your sterile filtration, formulation, and even when the product in the market, the role of quality management team does not finish there. They are checking it at every step. And these are the products which we are making, the vials which you see. We can making the DPT vaccine. We are making TD, anti -seras, And that's all from our institution. And uh, that's the end of it. Thank you so much.